Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sam. I'm a professional hairstylist and one of the goals here on my channel is to bring clients and hairstylists together and kind of get them on the same page. I feel like there's a lot of information that hairstylists know that clients may not understand and I think sometimes hairstylists have a hard time seeing things from a client's perspective. There's a lot of knowledge that we have that to us just feels like common sense, second nature, and we may forget that for someone who doesn't have the same kind of training and education as us, they might be totally unaware of the common sense things. In today's video, I wanna talk about why your hair might not look exactly like the inspiration photo. I love using photos during my consultations with clients because it's a great tool for communication. You can come in and tell me that you want caramel highlights, but your idea of caramel might be different from my idea of caramel. Where do you want them to be placed? How heavy do you want them to be? Do you want them to go all the way up to the root? There's a lot more that goes into it, and I think that verbally trying to explain things as complex, especially as color, can be really difficult. So bringing in photos for inspiration is very helpful because you can show your stylist, hey, this is what I like. However, it's not foolproof, of course, because sometimes you might come across a client that just gets really caught up on one specific inspiration photo and they want their hair to look exactly like the photo. So for stylists, this is a great way to explain to your client why their hair doesn't look exactly like their inspiration photo. And for clients, this is something to keep in mind. And if you've ever been in this situation before, hopefully this video will explain why that is. I think it should go without saying that inspiration photos are just inspiration. This is not like a copy and paste, taking something from a photo and then putting it directly on your head. It doesn't work that way, of course. So the first thing to keep in mind when you're looking at an inspiration photo is it's a still image. And still images are going to look different than something in person, in real life, that's moving around in front of you. You can look at a picture of somebody's hair, but to be honest, you don't really know what that person's hair truly looks like because you are just seeing it from one angle, under one particular type of lighting, with one shirt on, one background color. If you were to see that person in real life, most likely their hair, I mean, of course, it's not gonna look totally different because that is still their hair in the picture, assuming that the hairstylist didn't edit or filter the image in any way. But seeing them in person, it is gonna look a little bit different because it's gonna be reflecting the light and it's gonna be, you know, moving around. You're gonna be seeing all different angles of it. Even if you were to see video of that same exact hair from that picture, it's probably gonna look a little bit different than that still image does. Speaking of which, there are so many things that come into play when you're looking at a photo. The camera that the photo was taken with, it's actually really crazy how different cameras will pick up color so differently. I can take a picture of the same exact thing and it will look significantly different on my brother's iPhone 8 versus my iPhone 8 Plus, versus my handheld vlog camera, versus my big DSLR camera that I'm filming with right now. You also have to keep in mind all of the other colors that are in that same image. Hair color will look different depending on the shirt that you're wearing. My hair color, for example, I would say is kind of like right in the middle. Depending on how you look at it, sometimes it looks more like a light brown, other times it looks more blonde. If I'm wearing a black or dark colored shirt, my hair will seem lighter, but if I'm wearing a white or light colored shirt, my hair will seem a little bit darker. So you have to keep in mind the color that the person in the image is wearing, also the colors of what's happening in the background. Darker background colors will make the hair pop and appear brighter and lighter, whereas lighter background colors will make the hair look a little bit more dimensional and a little bit darker. Another thing that you have to keep in mind, and this is very important, that's lighting. Lighting affects color significantly. What even is color? It's a reflection of light. So your hair color is going to look completely different depending on the lighting. And I've actually done a post on my Instagram where I demonstrated this, and I actually wanna demonstrate it again in video. So I have my little vlog camera here, and I am going to take you around my apartment to different kinds of lighting, and I am going to demonstrate firsthand how 
my hair color will change. And actually, this is a good example of what I mentioned earlier, how different cameras will pick up light differently. You can see I'm sitting in the exact same room, exact lighting situation, but I feel like my vlog camera is picking up my hair a little bit darker and warmer than my DSLR camera is. So. So here I am in my living room. I'm just standing in front of a big window, natural light. I don't have any artificial light in this room right now. So now let's walk around. Here I am in the hallway and I have still natural light, but it's further away. Now in my bathroom and the bulbs in here are like a warmer tone. You can see it looks a lot warmer. We'll go in my kitchen and in this room you can see it's yellow and the lighting in here, these bulbs are like straight orange. And now we'll go down into the entryway of my apartment and the light in here is white. And you can see how it looks different. Now it looks a lot more cool toned. You can't see really any of that like reddish color that was reflecting up top. Also notice too how I'm standing directly underneath the light. So up top here looks a lot brighter and then down on the ends looks a little bit darker because it's casting a shadow down here. So even like the direction that the lighting is coming from will affect how the color looks. So you can have hair that is 100% completely white, but if you go and you stand in a room that has an orange or warm colored light bulb, that hair is gonna look really warm and it's gonna look kind of yellow or orange, even though it's actually white. I have a couple of brunette clients that absolutely hate seeing any kind of red tones in their hair. So they come in to get a gloss and I just add straight like blue pigment into their hair to make it as dark and cool toned as possible. But when they go outside and they're looking at their hair under direct sunlight, they're still seeing some of those warm tones and it drives them crazy. But I have to explain to them that under the sun, your hair is always going to look warm because the sun's light is warm. So you have to keep in mind that when you're comparing your own hair to the inspiration photo, you need to be looking at it under the exact same type of lighting that the photo was taken in. You can't look at an inspiration photo that was taken in front of a big bright ring light and then go look at your hair in a darkly lit bathroom with like an orange light bulb and then get upset that it doesn't look the same. Of course it's not gonna look the same. If the person in the inspiration photo were to go stand in the bathroom with you, their hair would not look like that photo either because the lighting is totally different. Another thing to keep in mind and another reason why your hair might not look exactly like the inspiration photo is because the way that it's styled will also affect how the color actually looks. If you're looking for dimensional color like a balayage or highlights or something like that, when you wear your hair straight, it's gonna all look a lot more solid. You're not gonna see as much of that dimension. But when you add waves or curls to the hair, then you're gonna see all of the different colors throughout. And it's gonna look a lot more dimensional and it's gonna look a little bit darker. And then the last thing to keep in mind is the person in the inspiration photo is just a totally different person from you. Their hair is different from your hair. Maybe it's a completely different texture, it's a different density, they have a different curl pattern, different hair history. I've had tons of brunettes come in and they bring inspiration photos of blonde balayage, but the girls in the inspiration photo, I can tell from the root color up top that they're naturally already blonde. So it's gonna look different on them because they are naturally brunette. So the highlights that I add to their hair are gonna contrast way more and it's not gonna look quite the same as the inspiration photos. Your hair texture also plays a big part on how the color can look. 
if you have more porous hair, coarser hair, hair that's like frizzier, curlier, it may not shine the same way as hair that is naturally really straight and shiny and silky. And so the color may not look the same as a result. So I can do the exact same color on two different people and my application, my formula, everything can be exactly the same, but it might not necessarily look exactly the same if one client's hair is a lot thicker and fuller and curlier and coarser than the other girls or if their hair history is different. So I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Remember, inspiration photos are great tools for consultations. They're really helpful and I do really suggest if you're a client, bring some inspiration photos with you to your appointment. I will never proceed with a service, especially a color service with a new client without looking at inspiration photos first. But don't get super caught up on just one photo in particular and don't go in expecting your hair to look exactly like that one photo. Find multiple photos of things you like. Find photos of things that you don't like and try to understand that these photos are a guideline to help you communicate with your stylist what you like and don't like, but it's not an exact blueprint. It's not a copy and paste situation. We're not robots. Hair is an organic material and we're all different people. So we're all going to have hair that is slightly different. If you enjoyed this video and there was anything in it that resonated with you, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps my channel out a lot and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye.